welcome to the St. James Baptist Church. Thank you so much for joining in with us. I pray that you have been safe during this COVID-19 virus that's going around. I know we can no longer worship like we normally have been, but that will not always last. Praise be to God, we can still get the word of God out to you. Please turn in, watch our broadcast on YouTube Live, St. James Baptist Church, SJBC TVN, or you can go to our church website and watch it live on our broadcast. I pray God will bless you with something that is said. Bless you, St. James Baptist Church. You've been 
my father too. If it were for you, Lord, what would I do? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been good. I know you've been so good to me. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. You've been so good to me. Amen. We celebrate that, that the Lord has been definitely good to us, and we praise God. Let's just bless him and thank him and remind him of how good he has been to us. We will be the benefits of that. We praise God. Amen. Thank you, Brother Smith, for blessing us uh, this morning. We really needed, needed to hear that in our spirit on this day. I fail to remind you, a Sunday school today at 1230. And most of you already have the conference call information. At 12.30, we will have our uh, Sunday School of Dr. Vivian McKnight uh, at 12.30. So please look forward to that um, today at 12.30 through conference call. Amen. Let me uh, turn uh, to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9 is our text on this Sunday morning, the second Sunday of the month of June. Time is flying. Summer is almost here. Mark chapter 9. Thank our praise team and musicians. Thank you this morning. Amen for blessing us. Mark 9. Um, I want to begin at verse number 33. Mark 9 and 33, if you have it. Mark 9 and 33. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them, taking the child in his arms and said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Verse 37, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who has sent me. Uh, I want to um, preach from the subject this morning. I'm not perfect, but I'm perfect for you. I'm not perfect but I'm perfect for you. My brothers and sisters, uh, it seems to be some kind of speculation upon those whom Jesus is looking for. Particularly, we hear that in, in the Christian circle a lot. We hear people say that Jesus is looking for someone who's this and someone who's that. That Jesus is looking for someone who will do this and someone who will do that. We seem to somehow have drawn a line in the type of people or persons that Jesus is looking for. I'm convinced that Jesus is not looking for a type of people or persons. I'm convinced that Jesus is looking for a person. And I say that because often we read scriptures that he reminds us to come to him and come as we are. We even heard the song says to come to him without one plea. These are, these are the words uttered, and these are the songs that we sing. And I declare that Jesus never said that he was looking for a type of people. Now, he did challenge us that once we were in him, there were expectations of him. And the expectations is that we would, that we would redeem our lives and we would consider how we live that we will walk as we were, quote, circumspectly among the world. 
that we would not be a stumbling block to others, and that we will always live a life of humility and serve him with gladness. But church, that is after one has been born again. That is the expectation and the teachings of Jesus after one has accepted him as Lord and Savior. But prior to being accepted as Lord and Savior, Jesus never said he was looking for a certain type. Matter of fact, John made it simple when he said in 3.16, that for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whom shall ever believe it in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. To whomsoever was not restricted to a certain kind of people. Jesus is looking for sinners. He's looking for those whose life has not been redeemed by his father. He's looking for those uh, in all walks of life. He's looking for those geographically who live all over the world. He's looking for those who come from rich families and poor families. He's looking for those who has habits and those who don't have habits. He's looking for those who are willing to confess that he is Lord and that he is the savior of the world. He's looking for those who don't mind and who can recall and remember that every knee will bow and that every tongue will confess. He's looking for those of us who are gathered around this altar those of us who are gathered in front of the TV even now, those of us who are in the Lord's house is whom he is looking for. But he's also looking for those who are outside the body of Christ. Whosoever will, he said, let them come. He's no respecter of persons. He looks beyond our faults and he ministers to every last one of our needs. There was a conversation ensued among disciples. These brothers were spending time around Jesus. They had seen him doing the Mount of Transfiguration. They had been around him long enough to learn, I'm going to say by now, at least learn something. You ought to be around Christ long enough to learn something. You may not know everything, but you ought to at least learn something. These brothers, I would have thought by now, ought to at least have learned something. They engaged in some conversation, and the conversation kind of went like this. The conversation kind of went, I wonder who would be the greatest in Jesus' kingdom. Once he gets to his kingdom, which of us, no, not others, but which of us, which of us will, will sit at the front? Which one of us, which one of us will, will be uh, in, in order and in rank and in position? And the conversation between them really started off among a conversation, but it ended up in an escalated into a debate. That's why you gotta learn how to be careful sometime in engaging in conversations with people because you don't want the word of God to become debatable. I do it all the time, particularly for those who are not of my religion, amen. For those who some reason want to just seem to bother the neighborhood and knock on folks' doors, amen, with their belief. But then I remind myself that I, the word of God was never meant to be debated, but it was meant to be lived. And so that's why you don't get into uh, the word of God being debated. It, what really started in the conversation ended up in a debate. And the debate was, who among them would be the greatest in the kingdom? Isn't that something? Couldn't they find something else to talk about? Couldn't they have just sat down and just reminisce over the healings they've seen Jesus do? The mouths they've seen him feed? The widows, those whom he had made whole? Wouldn't that have been a better conversation to be able to discuss among each other? It's amazing how once we are in Christ, we seem to want to strive after position. As if we are in the world and position really matters. Jesus never told any of us that position matters. In fact, he told those brothers after getting them to themselves, and of course they talked about this without Jesus. But then Jesus gets them to himself and said, what was it that y'all were talking about back there? What was the conversation? I didn't want to get into y'all conversation because I didn't want y'all to think that I was ear hustling. So... What was you talking about back yonder, as my grandmama would say? What was you talking about?
talking about back yonder over there in your conversation. Well, Jesus, we was just debating. We was just sitting down. You know, we've been around you for a while, and we like what you do, and we sing what you've done, and we are we are part of the kingdom now. We are part of you, and so. Uh, we know you are preparing us, as you see it, to do great works, that, greater works that we will do that you have already done. We shall do greater things. And so, but we know that you're not going to be around long. We don't, just don't know how long. But we do know the day and the hour is coming when the Son of Man must, must leave us. But before you leave us, Jesus, we want to ask you a question before you leave. And then that way we we'll, can be prepared and we'll know. But which of us will be which of us will be the greatest in the kingdom? And which of us positionally have you already cast your lots and looking at putting us in the ranks before you leave? And Jesus, so humbly, smiled at them and wanted them to know that this is really not about position. In fact, he said, he said anyone who wants to be first in the kingdom, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last. And the one that is last, remind it, remember, must be the servant of all. Uh, he took a little child and placed the child in front of them, held the child in his arms and says, as a matter of fact, whoever welcomes one of these little children and do it in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes my father or welcomes not just me, but the one who sent me. Jesus said, I'm not looking for perfection. You brothers got it all wrong. I don't, I don't know if I misled you in your new members class. I don't know, I don't know if, 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 if your Sunday school teacher may, may have misquoted or told you wrong or you misinterpreted. I don't know if you've been talking to others, if you're just used to being in position. But that's not how it works around here. That's not my desire. Position is not my desire. Because if position was my desire, I would have stayed with my father and have never come down to the earth. It's not about position. It's not about prominence. It's, it's not about all of that. But Jesus said, listen, I'm looking for those who are imperfect. So through the blood and through the teaching, I can make them perfect. In, in other words, Jesus said, listen, you're not really perfect, but, but guess what, disciples? You are perfect for me. You're not perfect. You didn't come from perfect backgrounds. You, you don't have the perfect position. You don't have the perfect attitude. You don't have the perfect behavior. You don't have the perfect knowledge. You, didn't, you, didn't, you don't have the perfect finances. And you're definitely not perfect. You're not perfect at all. You are all sinful creatures. But listen, you are not perfect, but brothers, you are perfect for me. That's why I chose you, and that's why God chose every last one of us. He didn't choose us because we were perfect. He didn't choose us because our mamas were this and our daddies were that. He chose us, the word says, Paul says, by grace are you saved and not by works lest any man should boast. That's why I am grateful to God that the Lord chose me for who I am. He didn't choose me because of my pedigree. He didn't choose me because of my mama and daddy's pedigree. But he chose me because he knew that I needed a savior and he knew at the right time. That's why all of us ended up getting saved because uh, God said, no, let me come down. They, they're not perfect at all. Look at them. Poor thing. I feel sorry for them. That They think they are all this. They think they are the cat's meow. They, they think they are the dog's biggest bark. They, they think they really got it going on. Look, look at them. They think, they think because they know who to buy their, uh, 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 their drugs from that, that is keeping them. They, they think just because they snuck out at night that they mama didn't see him but as the old folks say you, you might you might get by but but you won't get away he said he said no I, I know where you are I know who you are I know what you've done I know what you do but I'm looking beyond your fault and I'm gonna bless you in every last one of your needs aren't you glad that you won't perfect your Lord your life won't perfect but God reached down to the lowest parts of the earth and for some of us he had to reach a little bit lower for some he had to go in the closet for some he had to come up under a rock and grab us but God says you're not perfect but you are perfect for me you are the perfect disciple because once I put my spirit in you 
once you will have this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency and power may not be of God may not be of you but it will be of me yes that's the life I'm so glad to live I'm so glad to live to God be the glory I don't be I'm not perfect never said I was perfect never told anybody I was perfect and the thing about it be aware of people who tell you that they are you get far back as you can from people who live perfect lives. That's why I told you I have affinity about Peter because Peter's life wasn't perfect. He needed some work and Jesus worked with him. But God says, no, I'm going to make you perfect because what's going to make you perfect is my relationship with you. Now, when I finish with you, does not mean that you will be accepted by those I will send you among. See, that's what the world is looking for. The world is looking for perfection. I think we need to lower our standards because you will never find anybody that's perfect. Nobody has been perfect. Well, Pastor, my mama is perfect. The devil is a liar. Your mama ain't perfect. Well, Pastor, my grandmama and my granddaddy were perfect people. No, no, they were just perfect in front of you. Amen. But they weren't always old. Amen. They were once young as well. So you can't say that you come from a perfect family, a perfect pedigree. You know, the only perfect was the Father himself. Jesus lived a life of perfection and he did it because uh, the Holy Ghost in him and his Father was with him that he would live a life and perform the works of he who has sent him which means uh, that what Jesus has done, we too can do the same thing. Yes, he says, I'm not perfect, but I'm perfect for you. I, I, I'm not, I don't cross all my T's, I don't dot all my I's, but, but the Lord comes back and cross them and dot them for me. I, I'm not perfect. I, I, have not, I have not said all the right things and prayed all the right prayers, but, but I know how to pray in Jesus' name. I have not always given all my tithes. Yes, a man has robbed God, but, but I praise be to God that, that he rebuked the devourer for, for his name's sake. He still rebuked the devourer off me when the, the opportunity came. Yes, yes, even in his sight or even out of his sight, I'm always in his sight. It doesn't matter what we do. We're not perfect people. We're not perfect. And we claim to be perfect. Sometimes we try to walk like we're perfect. Some act like they're perfect. But I'm here to stick a pin in your bubble. You are not perfect. And you ought not feel shame about not being perfect. But praise be to God that God is grooming you. And that God is carving you out. And that God is filling you with his word. That you ought to be able to square your shoulders and look straight. And hold up your head. And know that there ought not be no shame in you your game that God has blessed you and raised you up to what he wants you to be you tell the disciples I know you're not perfect I don't know why you're debating why you're arguing why why you're such why you're so worried about what your position is going to be how did you end up being getting in, in this debate out of all conversations you could have had how did you end up on this road secondly he reminds them they're not perfect. But then he says, it's not about, it's not about uh, preference or, or preferment and status, but it's about opportunity to serve. He called the 12 over to him and reminded them that they are disciples. He grabs this little boy and uses this little boy for modelhood. Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant. Jesus who has modeled this himself. Wanted these disciples to know that, listen, I'm grabbing this child because children are innocent. Children are innocent until, until they get around those who will contaminate their innocence, until they get around some bad influence, and, and until that influence uh, influences them, they no longer, their innocence is jeopardized when they're in the midst of other people. Jesus grabbed the children and grabbed them and got close to them. And that's, that's what I love about Jesus, always using the perfect example. Jesus takes the child and holds him and says, no, listen, unless you humble yourself. Remember, anyone who wants to be first 
must be the last and the servant to all. In other words, he was reminding them of himself. Jesus said, I didn't come here to, to be served, but I came here to serve. That, that's what the Lord has saved us for. That's why all of us are in the body of Christ, because he called us to be some service. That's what the Lord needs this day and time. He don't need people who are jockeying for position, because, because when you get the position, it doesn't mean that you're much better. In the words of my father, if you're no count before you get the position, you're going to be no count when you get the position. It, it does not matter. He called us to be servants. That's what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for some people who will not look down their broad noses and their African-American thick lips at other African-Americans. He's looking at some people who don't mind going into the places where others won't go. He's looking for some people who will look beyond their attire and look at what other people have and minister to them. He's looking for service. And let me add parenthetically that being a servant sometimes will get you in trouble yes it will sometimes being a servant will get you in trouble because number one when you get when you become a servant what happens is you begin to identify with people you meet them where they are and when you meet people where they are, sometimes the others around you will look at you and question why are you meeting them where they are that's what happened with Jesus. Jesus identified himself with everybody. He would sit down and talk to the lowest of the low. He would sit down and talk with anybody. He would drink with anybody. He would eat with anybody. But yet he was accused of being a wine bibber. He was accused of being one of them. And Jesus said, listen, let me tell you something. Listen, I'll never forget where I came from. I ain't always lived with my father in heaven. I was born to a poor mother. I was born to a poor father. I, I know what it's like to live in the squalor. I know what it's like to not have two nickels to rub together uh, to make a dime. I, I, I know what it's like to eat the same thing every day. Baked chicken, fried chicken, barbecue chicken, chicken and dumplings, chicken salad. I, I know what it's like to be able to have a family who didn't have it all and born to a mother of low estate. Jesus said, I will never forget where I come from. That's what a real servant is. A real servant is somebody who will never forget where they come from. They can get along with everybody, anybody from anywhere, anyhow. When you know what the Lord has done for you, you have sympathy and empathy for other people. That's why Jesus had a prophet. It's without honor even in his own country. Sometimes uh, when you get around your own people, sometimes sometimes your own people won't accept it. But Jesus said, let me tell you, you might not accept me, but I know others who will take me as I am. In the words of Mary J. Blige, take me as I am. Yes, I love Jesus because one, he remembered me. He knew where to find me and he identified himself with me. Jesus will go with you anywhere, find you. I don't care where you are. He'll come to your rescue. That's what a real servant does. A real servant will come to people right where they are and not judge them but help them get off of their feet. He was a real servant and he chose these disciples. To be servants. That's what we are, church. We are disciples. We are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we humble ourselves. We, 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 now, humbling yourself doesn't mean that you let everybody walk on top of you either. Yes, yeah, sometimes people take our humility for granted. They think, well, he's not going to do anything because he's humble. And she's not going to do anything because she's so humble. No, uh-uh. Sometimes people will take your humility for granted because they think because you are meek and lowly and humble and that you're not going to say nothing. And I'm going to tell you, but I'm mindful that people will treat you like you let them treat you because my humility humility, amen, does not mean that you can treat me any kind of way. Do I have a half a witness here? You're a servant. When you're a servant, people will try to walk on you like you're a part of the road. When you are a servant, people will try to get over on you. When you are a servant, they think everything is yes, yes, and always amen. No, I might be humble, and I might be a servant, but Jesus also had a time when he rebuked at the same time. 
Yes, he was a servant, and Jesus modeled that well. That's why the word says, greater of him that is in us than he that is in the world. We can model the life of Jesus. We can do what Jesus did. We can go to, we can go for, we are his disciples. Yes, we may not be perfect, but, but again, guess what? I'm perfect for him. I may not be all that I want to be, but, but I am what I am for him. I, I may not have all that I want to have, but such as I have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I, I may not be what you think I ought to be, but, but the one thing I know is that I am gifted in him. Yes, I'm not perfect, but I'm perfect with you. Lastly, God uses, I love this because then God uses what I call sign language. He uses sign language to demonstrate his love and his word to us. He, he affectionately takes the little boy, a little child, into his loving arms and says, whoever welcomes one of these, my little children, uh, in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, or not just me, but whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who has sent me. This here was sign language. And the sign language really wasn't just what he said. The sign language is he grabbed the boy. And, and, and life is sign language to us because Jesus does speak to us in wonders and in signs and in wonders. Everything the Lord presents to us is not always verbal. You know, some things is a sign around us. Now, I'm not talking about zodiac sign. I had somebody ask me the other day, I didn't know you was a Gemini. I didn't know it either. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about zodiac. We're not talking about sign. But, but, but some things, some things that happen around us, some events that take place is the Lord speaking through us through sign. So yeah, you kind of wondering why this is going on. Could be a sign. You kind of wondering why that is happening. It could be a sign. Jesus used the boy as a sign or use the child as a sign because he wanted them to see that when he reached for the child how easy it was for the child to come to him you missed that see we thought the lesson was always verbal but sometimes what the lord is trying to teach us is non-verbal we thought that the lesson was in the language the verbal language no it was it wasn't but the lesson was really in the, the uh, in the in the the sign of jesus grabbing the boy what was the sign pastor you still hadn't told me yes i did you missed it the sign wasn't that jesus grabbed the boy the sign was, is that the boy did not resist coming to jesus you don't see where the boy walked away, shrugged his shoulders, or did anything. As soon as Jesus extended the invitation to pull the boy, the boy so willingly comes to Jesus' arm. That's the sign Jesus wants for us, that whosoever will, let them come. He doesn't want hesitation. He wants us to come just as we are. Knowing that we are not as innocent as the child, but Jesus, once we become, and once we fall in the arms of Jesus, we become innocent. Do I have a witness in here? Which means all of my guilt is now gone. Once, once I've come in the arms of Jesus, he no longer looks at my sin, but he sees me as who I am. That's what the innocence represents here. It represents that once you're in the arms of Jesus, Jesus, you are innocent. It doesn't matter what anybody has said. It doesn't matter what you have done in life. Whenever Jesus reaches for you, as long as you are distant from him, your, uh, your sin is always before you. But once he extends his hand, and once you are in his arms, he wraps his arms around you, it's a sign of your innocence. In other words, Jesus said, once you are in my hands, no man can pluck you out. 
Uh, aren't you glad that you were in the hands of Jesus? That you came to him as a sinner, but now you are in his hands. And now that you are in his hands, your sins are forgiven. Come here, my brother on the cross. You were a known thief. Folk knew, amen, that you were a common thief in the community. And everybody was up there for the right thing except for Jesus. Oh, but see, people said to Jesus, if you are, if you are who you say you are, won't you come down? And matter of fact, why don't you save us and save yourself? But but Jesus, I love what one man said that, that listen, we deserve to be up here, but this man has not done anything. And Jesus, when you get into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus said that this day you shall be in paradise. In other words, you are now innocent when you were guilty. And that's what Jesus has done. He has nailed all of our sins to the cross. And I'm so glad. I said, I am so glad that Jesus counts me as innocent. And now I could serve him. Do I have a witness in here? As the song would say, I promise him that I would serve him until I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. He's my rock and my salvation. I can serve the Lord with gladness. Do we have a half a witness? I can bless his name with gladness. I can sing with joy I can preach with joy because the Lord has promised me that I might not be perfect but Jerome you are perfect for me you are perfect to be my disciple you are perfect to be my servant and at the end of the day when this life is over there is a reward for you somewhere over there yes Jesus said listen you might not be perfect but you are perfect for me. Don't worry about position. Don't worry about per, uh, 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 peripheral treatment. Uh, don't worry about uh, being in position because, because he says, listen, it's about being a servant at the end of the day. That's what it's about. Maybe my brother, my sister, uh, maybe there's someone, amen, who says, you know, I, I, I'm guilty. But listen, when you come to Jesus, it's, listen, your guilt can turn into innocence. Well, pastor, I've done, and pastor, you just don't know. Listen, I don't need to know. It's not up to me, but God knows. You may not be perfect, but, but you are perfect for him. You may not be perfect for the organization that you want to join because maybe you don't fit their status. You may not be perfect for the club you want to belong to because maybe you're not, you, uh, you, you're not quite one of them. You're an outcast. You may not be a part of the, of the club. You may not be a part of the organization. Listen, listen. Uh, there are certain standards you must have uh, to be in this clique. Certain, um, certain, uh, you must have certain income to be a part of this club and this organization. Jesus said, look, I, I, that's, not, that's not what I need. Jesus said, listen, you might not think you're perfect. And you might not be perfect. And matter of fact, the Lord says, I know you're not perfect. All have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory. But guess what? He says, you are perfect for me. You are per I, I raised you up. I, I will take those from the, from the guttermost and elevate them to the uttermost. He says, I can turn your life around. I, I, when I finish with you, folk won't even recognize who you were. Aren't you that? Yes, I was. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I wasn't perfect, but I'm perfect for my Father. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, our Father, again, we thank you. We thank you, O oh Lord God, that you look beyond our faults and you minister to every one of our needs. Lord, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, we have never been perfect. And forgive us if we ever said we were. But Lord, we are perfect for you. Your disciples weren't perfect. They came from different backgrounds, different cultures. But Heavenly Father, they weren't perfect either, but they were perfect for you. Peter wasn't perfect, but you used him to be your disciple. Then you turn around and use him to preach and save 3,000. Then you turn around and use him to be pretty much the, the anointed one for your, the book of Acts. Paul wasn't perfect. He persecuted Christians. Wasn't perfect. But when you came in his life, you made him perfect for you. 
who end up writing almost 13 of the, of the books of the New Testament. Mary Magdalene wasn't perfect. But Lord, when she hooked up with you, <laughs> you made her perfect. She was perfect for you. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, and the Bible goes on and on and on of others who were imperfect, but you made them perfect. God, right now, we pray some brother and some sister right now who feel the guilt of not being perfect. They want to come to you, but Lord, they got so much sin and so much dirt in their life. God, they just feel so imperfect. But Lord, we thank you because your love will cover a multitude of sin. You will wash them in the blood. You will forgive them of their transgressions. And they now will become perfect for you. Whosoever will, let them come. Come as we are. Lord, we pray that you will continue, God, to bless us. We pray for St. James Baptist Church and those on our healing and recovery list. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who have to have surgeries. We ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you would go ahead of them. Prepare the operating room. Prepare the anesthesiologists. God, you are the first anesthesiologist man to have ever known. You put Adam to sleep. And while he was asleep, you took from him a rib and made a, a Eve. God, we thank you, oh God, for being not only the first anesthesiologist, but God, you've also was, you was the, God, you was the first uh, surgeon as well. So God, we pray, God, that you would bless those who will have surgery. We pray, God, right now for those who are still in mourning from the death of loved ones, whether it was recent or whether it was sometime. Lord God, you are a healer, and we ask that you would heal in a mighty way. God, we pray for our men season. God, we pray that you would bless us, yes. oh God, as men. Yes. Men to be priests of our homes. Hallelujah. Men to not be ashamed to be servants of the Most High God. Men who don't have to jock for position, but men who will humble themselves and serve you, O oh God, until that day come where we cannot serve you. God, we pray that in the name of Jesus, God, you told us to work while it's day because the night will come when no man shall be able to work. God, we pray, O oh God, that you will continue, O oh God, to lead our congregation. Lord God, bless your church during this COVID-19. We pray that you will please watch over North Carolina as, Lord God, as COVID-19 patients have spiked up a little bit. God, help us to humble ourselves. Put on our mask, God, and, and, uh, and so practice social distancing, God, so we can get those numbers down, God. So, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to come to the house of God and worship. God, bless us, God. Bless those who have to work from home. And we pray, God, for those whose jobs have been furloughed, who have not worked since March. God, who are, who are at home and cannot work, want to go to work, bills are catching up. God, some of them were able to qualify, Heavenly Father, for government assistance, and some of them were not. God, we pray that in the name of Jesus, God, that you will still put bread on the table, oh God, Hallelujah. and feed the children. God, we pray, oh God, that you will continue, oh God, to lead us and guide us and help us to be mindful that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Bless us, God, this week. Cover us, if you will, in going and in our coming. And God, we'll, we shall forever give you praise. Hallelujah. We bless you. We give you praise. We lift you up on high. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and who can present us faultless before his presence with exceeding and with great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth and forever. And the people of God say amen. I'm not perfect, but I'm perfect for you. Thank you for tuning in to the St. James Baptist Church broadcast. We pray something was said or something done that convicted your heart to continue serving God. However, if you are not a part of the body of Christ and would love to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can give us a call 336-273-0822 or either 0823. 
please give us a call and leave us your name and we will be more than glad to speak with you. If there's a local congregation in your neighborhood or your community or your city, please give them a call to let them know that you would love to accept Jesus Christ and be a part of their ministry. Thank you for tuning in and we hope to see you again. Oh, 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 o